iron deficiency chlorosis was about as bad as we've ever seen it each of the last couple years. Let's talk about what you can do this year so IDC doesn't rob big time yield on your farm. Well, the good thing, Brian, is right now is the time to be talking about this before planting for most farmers. If you've got iron deficiency chlorosis, your best options are either before planting or right with the planter to put some treatments out there. So let's first start talking about what are the things that are causing this iron deficiency chlorosis. The first one is high pH. In many cases, especially in the upper Midwest, we've got insufficient drainage. And I talk to farmers all the time that say, well, I've got pattern tile out there. And I say, oh, great, what's your spacing? Well, my spacing's 100 feet, and I've got a cation exchange capacity of 30 in my soil. Well, you've got way too heavy a ground and your spacing is too wide. You need to split those spacings, narrow things up to improve your drainage. Well, Darren, what I didn't like about what you said there was you said the first problem and the first cause of IDC. Uh, I'm going to restate that. The only cause of iron deficiency chlorosis is high pH. If you do not have high pH, you will not have iron deficiency chlorosis, period. What ends up happening is in high pH soils, that ferrous good iron form turns to ferric and the problem is the plant can't use it. That's the entire problem. Now, once you have high pH, is it worse if you have high nitrate? Yes. Is it worse if you have high salt? Yes. Is it worse if you have high carbonates and bicarbonates? Yes. So all those things are absolutely true, but again, I don't care. You can have high nitrate, high salt, high carbonates and bicarbonates. If you have low pH, you will not have iron deficiency chlorosis. All right, let's talk about that iron component because when you hear, oh, I've got iron in the wrong form, well, this should be a simple fix. I just need to deliver iron in the correct form to my plant. So there are lots of products out there that are being promoted across the country. Oh, you can use this foliar, or you can use this in furrow, or you can use this soil applied treatment. What's really working? Well, the best solution that we found has been an ortho ortho chelate that goes right in the furrow at planting. The problem is the formulations are not the most friendly to deal with. They take a little bit of work to get mixed up and in solution, and they can kind of make a mess of equipment, but they are worth it. What we're seeing is if you're using full rates of these types of products, like a soy green, for example, to throw a name out there, if you're putting that in furrow at planting time, we can keep the beans pretty green in all but the extreme situations, and we're seeing a yield response to go along with that that provides a good return on your investment. I love how Darren neglected to mention the most important thing here, so he's leaving that for me to tell you that this is not cheap. You're gonna spend 20 to $30 an acre to get enough iron out there to do yourself some good. Okay, hold on, Brian. You say it's not cheap, but how yep. much are you losing to iron I understand closest? that. In some but, areas, yep. these fields are dying in these spots. Yeah, but let's say I'm a 3,000 acre soybean farmer and you're telling me I've now got to invest $60,000 or maybe $90,000, that gets difficult when you're already uh, just about to put those beans in the ground. The banker is already telling you, hey, you need to cut costs, and you go, well, I'd like to cut costs, but I can't, because here's what I have to do. So what our suggestion for you is, ideally, long-term, we want you to fix the drainage issue, fix the high pH issue. You absolutely can do it. We've done it on our own farm. In the meantime, yes, you're gonna have to put some iron out there, it's gotta be at planting time though. If you do it foliar, you can green the beans up later on, but in our experience, we've not been able to increase yield. So if your only goal is make the beans look nice, so your wife thinks you're doing a great job or your neighbors think you're doing a great job, fine, but it's not probably not gonna be worthwhile economically. The other thing you can do at planting time is change varieties as you cross the field. We've done that before too, where we've planted a racehorse bean where the soil pH is seven or less. And in the high pH spots, we plant a good iron deficiency chlorosis bean, and that really, really helps. Well, another thing too, Brian, is planting population. When you see just pockets in the field where we've got iron deficiency chlorosis, we're seeing some farmers use planting population to really help the situation by greatly increasing planting population just in those spots of the field, which is pretty easy to do with modern equipment, you can get more plant roots growing out there. All of a sudden, they're kicking out more organic acids into the soil. We're lowering the pH in those areas, and we're seeing less yellow beans. Once again, if you're worried about iron deficiency chlorosis, long-term, the solution is get your soil pH down. Problem goes away forever, done. In the short term, pick a really good tolerant soybean, use some iron at planting time, and then also what I would do is I'd increase my population and plant 
the very best IDC bean in those really hot spots and plant something else in the areas where the pH is fine. Well, fixing your soil pH will improve soil health, will improve crop productivity in those areas, which also helps keep our weed of the week out. We'll show you what else will stop our weed coming up after this.